utilize your pitches the best way possible. So I think from that department, they know if you're going to be successful in the big leagues or not, just from all the knowledge they have from using that data. So it's pretty cool. So where does the intersection between that data and implementing mental skills come in for you personally? I think they're both, well, they could be on the same page because it does give you that confidence of knowing, hey, this pitch can play in the big league, so I'm going to throw this more. And that gives you the confidence to go out and just perform on that one pitch and show other ones that are just, you know, just for show. But you know that that one pitch is going to get out, so that builds your confidence for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the culture around rehabilitation from something like a Tommy John surgery like in the MLB? Um, so unfortunately, when I had my surgery, I was a part of the minor league group. Um, and it was, you know, for the first couple months, it was fine. And then it just got awful because, you know, you're doing the same thing every day. And you're in Port Charlotte, no offense to everybody that lives in Port Charlotte, but it's not the greatest city to be in. You know, it's just, there's nothing to do. Um, there's, yeah, there's just nothing to do. And so it's just like you're consumed in one area for so long that it takes a toll on you for sure. So how was, how are the people that were working for the Rays in sports psych able to help you work through the, the mental toll that rehabbing from an injury takes on you? Um, you know, that they would come and sit with me, you know, maybe every couple of weeks, ask how I'm doing, how's everything going on? And, you know, you just tell them what's on your mind, which is really great. But um, someone that helped me so much was um, James, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm going to say Schwab. That's what I'm going to say. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, we would walk around the, uh, the complex at like six 30 in the morning, take like two laps around the whole complex and just talk to each other. And, uh, he's the one that got me into like journal writing and stuff like that. And, uh, I think that really like saved me, saved me mentally for sure. So what was he having you journal about? Was it daily stuff or was it more pointed just more and less like what's on my mind. So I, I told, he handed me a piece of paper or handed me a journal and a pen. And it was like, here, I want you to write. And I'm like, dude, I hate writing. Like I hated school. Like I hate writing. I don't want to write. I'm not going to like this. It's like, can you just do it for me? I was like, I don't even know where to start. And he's just like, write down. I am thinking about blah, 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 blah. So I started doing that. And I fell in love with it. And I felt so like in the present moment, I would just write, I am thinking about and whatever's on my mind, I'll write it until my mind goes like blank and I have no more thoughts. And that's how I know I'd be in the present moment. And so everything I wrote down came true. It's crazy. That's so cool. So yeah. what is the difference in the mindset practices that you're implementing between your, your experience in the minor leagues and then now in the majors? Um. I honestly wish I had these tools in the minor league. Like, don't get me wrong. I had a successful minor league career. It was probably one of the best. And, um, but internally I, I wasn't where I wanted to be. So I think, you know, I'm more grateful now that being in the big leagues and, uh, just being able to be grateful for everything that I had to go through and all that, I just remind myself every day. And I'm, I'm, I guess I can find that happiness within myself. So what was your first experience with sports psychology like, and when did that occur? Was it early mm. on or was it more? It was kind of, longer into it your was, career? it, it's kind of like both. Um, my first thing with it was in, uh, 2016, I was in AAA with the St. Louis Cardinals, having a phenomenal year. Um, I was an all-star that year in AAA, and, and it was great. And so I had a bad outing, and I had a couple bad outings, and I had no one to talk to about it. And so I went into the manager's office because he's been my manager since, you know, rookie ball. And so I go in there, and I'm like, hey, I just want to let you know, like, you know, I'm feeling kind of down on myself. Like, I have no one to talk to about this. I kind of feel like I'm failing right now, like, blah, blah, blah. 
they took it to a whole nother level and they go on the phone, they start calling the psychologist, like Ryan needs to see a psychologist, like blah, blah, blah. And then I was considered labeled, which is not a good term in baseball. And I was like, I'm just a player that, you know, I'm making 800 bucks every two weeks to perform at this high level. And you're going to think I have like issues because of that. Like I'm frustrated, you know? And, um, ever since then, that was just a terrible experience. So I kept my mouth shut for a couple of years after that. And, uh, once I got over to the Rays, their like willingness to work with people was just so amazing. Yeah. I mean, the Rays have a superb sports psychology staff. And so that's why I was so excited to talk to you because I love sports psychology and peak performance. And after having been in the minors for so many years, when you finally got to the majors and then you ended up in a world series, I was wondering what that process was like for your mental health and also the mental skills that you've learned along the way. Yeah. So when I first got to the big leagues in 2017, honestly, I wasn't even that excited. I was more angry at the fact I haven't been called up sooner. Um, I felt like I paid my dues, you know, for the Cardinals. I felt like I'd done everything that I could have done. And they waited all this time just to call me up. I get it. I'm a 28th round draft pick. I didn't get, I didn't sign for a lot of money or anything like that, but it was just more the less I was a back-to-back all-stars in AAA. Like there's nothing more I could have done, you know? And so that, that kind of angered me, but once I tore my elbow, I, I was kind of, you know, down on myself a little bit and then thought I was going to be a free agent and all this stuff. And so once the Cardinals released me, I was kind of happy, took a lot of weight off my shoulders. And then the Rays called again and was just like, Hey, we want to sign you, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, cool. So as soon as the season was over, signed with the Rays. I was like, all right, here we go again. Paid for all my rehab, did all that cool stuff. And when I made, when I got back to the big leagues last year after Tommy John, I think that was more fulfilling than it was uh, making my debut in 2017. So what does mental toughness mean to you? Oh, that's tough. Um, Determination, um, not giving up. Um, sticking through things that you don't like to do. And um, I think that that's what like really builds character. Yeah, I mean, as a pitcher, I'm sure that, I mean, one of the things that I love about baseball is the little idiosyncrasies. So a pitcher looking at his glove or tipping his hat, something that he does before every single pitch that just gets him in the zone. Do you have any Mm. of those? I just take a really deep breath. Um, I'm huge into meditation. So I just like, I breathe. That's my thing. I just like breathing. So I'm just there. Is there anything that you tell yourself before every inning or even every pitch, every batter? Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss on this, so I don't really want to say it. (laughs) Yeah. Let's, let's not go down that route. (laughs) Yeah. But is there anything that you see other pitchers doing that then you try to implement into your, into what you do? Um, you know, I've seen it, but I was actually on clubhouse the other day and I listened to, um, this woman named Taiba talk. And she was like, we, we always get, you know, we always try to identify ourselves with somebody else or like compare ourselves to somebody else. And that really hit me like really hard. I was like, I try to like throw a hundred like everybody in the bullpen, but that's not who I am. So I got to stop trying to do that. I got to just do, I just got to be me because it's been successful. And so I think looking at other people is just not going to work for each individual, you know? Yeah. I mean, one of the things that when I was doing a little bit of research on you, I found was that the thing that the Rays really like about you is that you're so consistent in ground balls. So you're not really like a strikeout guy. You're put the ball in play and rely on the people around you, your teammates to really capitalize on what you've given them. Like, yeah, I found this, I found this stat that throughout your career, you've induced ground balls, 60.4% of the balls in play. I think that's pretty good. That's astounding. That's a great (laughs) stat. But the thing is that, you're so consistent in that regard that I think that that makes you different from 
the guys who are consistently throwing insane fastballs. Yeah. I mean, I used to strike people out. Um, you know, last year was really my first year back in competition. So it was just really like, I didn't know what was going to work or what was not going to work. Um, hopefully I can get a little more strikeouts this year. That'd be nice. Um, it looks better, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I just try to get in and get out of there as quick as, as quick as I can just hang out. Um, like like your wanna, world series experience. Yeah. I don't want to be out there for too long. It's just too much going on. You know, I just try to get in, get out, do my job and, and see you tomorrow. Yeah. Is there any, are there any reset routines that you go through from game to game? So say you have a not so good outing. What do you tell yourself going into the next time? If I don't have a good outing, I don't know. I haven't had a, a bad one in a long time. I don't want to jinx myself on this. Um, you don't have to answer that then. I don't want to okay. jinx you. No, it's okay. Um, there was probably something missing in my routine that I just didn't do or something like that or I wasn't feeling prepared for me to have I don't uh I don't know a bad outing or something like that I try to keep everything on the same time schedule and everything you know this time this time this time this time so do you have any pregame rituals um I always wear the same socks I always have the same cleats same undershirt they're they're washed um same glove, all that stuff. And if something goes wrong, let's say I give up a run or something, I switch it up. Really? Yeah. That's that's interesting. So, like, what what was the the mindset going into the World Series? Um. Well, the first one for me was I hope we win. That'd be cool. Um, but other than that, I didn't pitch in like a month. I was just throwing like live batting practices down in like San Diego when we were there. And so I was just like, I hope I could throw the ball over the plate because I haven't really pitched in a game in a month. And so once they called me in, yeah, I just said my cue in my head. Um, I don't want to cuss, so I'm not going to say it. Um, and I just went on from there and just, you know, here you go, hit the ball. If you hit it, you hit it. There's, there's really nothing I can do about it. So was there any specific thing that your coaching staff told you going into the world series when there was a a strong potential that you were going in at relief um the day i got put on the roster cash was like he calls me he goes hey they got a lot of lefties i need you to carve them up i was like all right you know i'll do it uh, that was it I hung up the phone and i knew what my job was going to be yeah i mean the dodgers had so many lefties and yeah. I was wondering if that was a, if there was a difference when you're going up against a lefty versus a righty. No, not at all. I mean, I, I'm, I know it's an uncomfortable at bat for a lefty uh, when I face them. So that gives me a lot more confidence in facing a righty. So. so are you, are you honing those skills at spring training right now, or are you just kind of continuing to do what you know has worked in the past? Uh, I'm going to continue to do what I know has worked. Uh, I'm trying to get better every day for the most part. A little weird spring training this year with COVID and everything. You know, last year we didn't have to go through this. So the off season was a little different to where like, you know, a lot of things are not, you know, there for us to use as resources. Um, I was in LA and everything is closed. So I had to make the best of what I could with what I had. So it's just a little different. I'm using the spring training kind of to prepare myself for the season, I guess you could say, you know, workout wise and all that stuff. So what does a day in the life of you at spring training look like? I mean, what uh, time me? are you waking up? What time are you going to bed and what's happening in between? Um, the times are, are uh, uh, a little different this year, you know, because we can't all be at the same place at once. So um, let's say today, for example, uh, I woke up at around 640, seven o'clock in the morning, um, you know, just hung out on my phone, um, got ready, uh, went to the field at around 830, get dressed, eat breakfast, do my warm up. That takes usually about an hour to do. Um, and then go play catch, take some PFPs after that. I'll be in the weight room until, I don't know, probably another hour, um, get back out and come, come back home and, and watch investigation discovery on my TV. <laughs>
what's what's the atmosphere like at spring training where you're you're playing other teams but there's no weight really put on those games um last year there was a lot of weight for me since the fact that it's my first year back um and i really wanted to see how my stuff would play and i i thought i did well and, and i was grateful for the opportunity this year it's a little different with the with the covid stuff um you just don't know what's going to happen it's all like in the unknown um but also pitching in the world series and and doing what we did nothing's really nerve wracking anymore after experiencing that. So we experienced the pinnacle of sports and it's just like, you know, it's out here doing our job now. So how have the sports psych staff and the player development team helped you create who you want to be in the majors? Um, like, for example, you talked about the player development team using TrackMan to get you all of your pitching stats, but on a deeper level, how has having that kind of backing from the team that believes in you, how has that made you into this player? I think for myself and my own personal experience, if I put too much pressure on myself, I do terrible. So for me, I need to live in the present moment. I need to not worry about the things I can't control. So for example, in the World Series, um, Justin Sua, our mental guy, came up to me while we were taking batting practice. And he was like, how do you feel right now? I was like, I am so anxious and I have so much anxiety. You have no idea. He's like, what are you thinking about? I was like, I'm thinking about what if I blow the game, like game seven, I come into close because last season I was coming in the eighth and ninth inning a lot. And so I was like, okay, I'm a back end type of dude kind of. Um, and so I was like, what if I blow the game? What if I do this? Like, what if I do that? And he goes, if you're going to go to one extreme of the negative on the what ifs, you have to go to the other extreme of the positive of the what ifs. So what if you strike everybody out? What if you don't give up any hits? Like, what if you, do this and do that. I started thinking about that and I'm like, wow, like that is really powerful stuff. And so that's what I used in the bullpen. And I was like, what if I strike this guy out? What if I don't give up any hits? Blah, 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 blah. And that's exactly what happened. That's insane. And it just yeah. proves the power of sports psychology. And Justin is amazing in the field. Like he is oh, one he's of the, the best. best. And he's also on Clubhouse. He, I think he just joined not too long ago. I've, yeah, we're I've friends. been in a couple of rooms with him and I mean, everything he says, I just feel like I'm, I want to take notes, you know? Yeah, he, so he is good. He's good. To have that at your disposal. I mean, how many times do you talk to him throughout the season? Um, I don't talk to him that much just because he knows, he knows me. He knows that like, I go into these states of like meditation and that like, I, I have it under control. Like he, he knows. So he kind of stays away from me a little bit. He knows if I have a question for him or a problem, something's wrong. So um, I, I don't know, maybe like once every three weeks, once a month, maybe. Are there check-ins or is it more lackadaisical? Hey, let me just kind of check in and update him. Um, he'll check in with me every now and then, you know, he checked in with me in the off season a couple of times, you know, I'm really close with his dad too. So we have that mutual connection. So what, can you walk me through the process of switching teams and what that did to your mental skills? Yeah. Um, I was glad to have a uh, fresh start. Um, I was with the Cardinals for I don't know how many years, almost 10 years, I want to say, I was eight years maybe. And um, just being there for so long and not being appreciated as a player for everything that I did for them was really, um, I guess you could say heartbreaking, just like, just anger, you know. And um, coming over to the Rays, I didn't know anything about the Rays. I've heard mixed reviews when I got there in 2019. And as soon as I got there and I was able to talk to all these mental skills guys and stuff like that, I was like, wow, they have, they, they know what they're doing. I was like, this is great. So I, I don't know. It was just, I love it here. Yeah. I, yeah. and I think that the fact that Justin and his staff make themselves so available to talk with not only players, but 
interested parties like the fact that he just sits on clubhouse for hours and lets us kind of bombard him with industry questions i think that that kind of environment is much more conducive to winning as well yeah i feel like mental health is is looked frowned upon in the sports world and, and it's kind of sucks because we're humans too we have a life outside of baseball and sports as well and and people don't see us like that and so it's a struggle So what, how would you go about changing that? I think the best I can do is just use my voice and speak to my experience. I mean, and that's really it. That's why I'm actually on Clubhouse sometimes and I'm on there and I'm looking in room. I'm in rooms with like grateful and positivity stuff. And, you know, if people ask me to speak, I'll give them, share my experience. You know, I've gone through the lows of the lows and the highs of the highs in this game. So. So when I was talking to Aisha Rahman, who works in your player development department, she was talking about the impact of replay and a larger broadcast staff with more cameras on game play. And the fact that now that there's such an emphasis on replay, players are less likely to steal and then get caught or they're, they're just more careful about the plays that they draw up and the chances that they take. Have you experienced anything like that? I have no idea, to okay. be honest with you. I don't, yeah. even, I don't even pay attention to that. I just try to throw, throw the ball down the middle and see if they can hit it. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's another thing that's so cool about baseball too, because you're live, as you as a pitcher are living in your own world and worrying about your own stuff. And then what happens behind you is there is their issue? Yeah, I let my I let my defense take care of all that stuff. I just try to let them hit the ball. And then we're gonna switch a little bit away from from the Rays and talk about your team on your time on Team Israel and what that meant to your family and representing them. Yeah, that was cool getting to pitch in the qualifiers. You know, my grandparents were in the Holocaust and and I basically just did it for them you know, everything they, they've gone through. I'm not a religious person. Um, I grew up Jewish, but I don't really, you know, practice religion or anything like that, but I, I, I did it for them. I just, you know, I know what they've gone through and, and stuff like that. So I just want to re represent that. I mean, I'm sure that they're, they're proud of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish there was a baseball classic uh, this year, but you know, COVID and stuff is killing a lot of things. So how do you feel about not having people in the stands? I kind of like it, to be honest. Um, I'm more, more dialed in, I think you could say. You don't have people asking for baseballs all the time, which is nice in the bullpen. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of like it. So yeah, that's, that's my take on it. I'll probably get a lot of crap for it, but it's all right. <laughs> how do you feel about the cardboard cutouts? I thought those were pretty funny. I really wanted to do a, one of my mom sleeping because she always sleeps in my house. And so like, she's always like knocked out like this on the couch and I have so many pictures and I wanted to uh, get a cardboard cut out made of her. Just, just knocked set, out at a one, game. Put one right behind home plate and just look at it before every pitch. Yeah, just have her knocked out at the game and I think it'd be great. That's, and like, how do you feel about artificial crowd noise being pumped in without fans being in this in the arenas um it didn't affect me i thought it was pretty cool um just all the stuff that they did it, it was pretty cool you know i still got nervous before I, before going out to pitch and stuff like that and uh you still get that same feeling because you still have a game to play and you're, and you're still competing so what was when you are about to come in at relief is there a feeling that that you get right before you get the call or is it just normal? you know you kind of know what your role is in the bullpen um you know the situation so look, for myself since i'm very good at getting left-handed hitters out i know if there's left right left 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 right or something like that i know it, i'm going in the game and so you just mentally have to prepare for that so how does the work that the player development team does impact you personally? Like the stats and the data that you're given, how do you go about implementing that? Um, 
so they give us our data sheets after we throw from the track man and I go over it with them. Hey, is this good? This good, this good. They'll be like, yeah, this is, this is good. How can I improve on that? Sometimes like you don't want to like, just stay here. You're fine. Don't, don't do too much. Um, if there's something a little off, be like, how can I do this? And they'll help you with that. And so the data that they give us and everything that they know, unbelievable. That's why we're the best. What was that like? the player development aspect in the minor leagues? I mean, was it as attentive or was it more kind of every man for himself? Um, I didn't really spend too much time in the minor leagues with, uh, with, with the Rays. I was only there for a couple of rehab appearances and then that was it. Um, I know when I was at the alternate site a little bit last year, it was, they were pretty good on that stuff they I would go over it with the pitching coordinator like this is really good you know we'll have group discussions about it and so I thought they were pretty pretty good about that that's awesome yeah so when you're looking at the mindset of a pitcher what do you think makes you different than the fielders going in what makes me different than the fielders well the 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 pitcher as a player what kind of mindset shifts happen versus a first baseman or an outfielder? Oh, I have no idea. I haven't played the field in so long. Well, I, I, what do you think makes, let me, let me rephrase, I guess. What about pitchers makes them and their mindset different? I think every pitcher is different. So let's take example, like Peter Fairbanks. He's out there to kill someone. And he is so intense. If I get too intense, it doesn't work for someone like myself. I'm a type of person that I just don't need to care. I don't care what happens. Because if I start caring too much, I start failing because I put too much pressure on myself. So there's two different uh, types of athletes, I guess you could say, in that realm. So the stress of having to be perfect and not fail, how do you deal with that? It's a mental battle every day with myself, every single day. So, I mean, relief pitchers are in to not fail 100% of the time. Yep. So how does that, how does that mindset differ from a starting pitcher? Um, honestly, I take the same mindset as when I started in the minor leagues to when I relieve now. You literally can't control anything after that ball leaves your hand. It's all out of your control. And everyone knows that all the player development people know that. So that's the only thing that you can do is just not worry about the things you can't control. Exactly. And what was the process like? Because you came in as a starting pitcher and then they made you into a, into a relief pitcher. So what was that process of, of fine tuning? Like it was weird. I first started relieving in 2014, but then I would also start a couple games too because I had experience doing it. Um, I remember going into the uh, player development's office with the Cardinals and saying, why am I relieving? I have the best numbers as a starter out of any of the starters in this organization. What's going on here? Oh, we see you have more value as a reliever. All right. Well, there's nothing I could really do. So started relieving and did well. Um, and you know, had to reinvent myself a little bit and it worked out. So thank you Cardinals for that one. Was there anyone in the industry that was helping you with that reinvention of your game or was it totally reliant on you? It was totally reliant on myself. Um, my shoulder was hurting at the end of the 2015 year in, uh, AAA, I believe. Yeah. I think it was 2015 going into spring training in 2016 my shoulder the front of my shoulder was like really hurting and um i was like god i don't know what's going on and so i thought to myself like throw sidearm so i started like doing that like dry repping i was like this feels really good and um so i used to work at work out at usc with like tom house and and all those guys over there and I started like throwing sidearm. I was like, wow, my arm feels really good. I'm throwing harder. Like this feels really good. And so I was like, all right, let's go into spring training like this. So I go to minor league spring training in uh, 2016. And my first outing, I think we were playing the Mets. 
and I did absolutely terrible, but I didn't care because I had nothing to lose. And usually I'm about like 87, 88 in spring training. And I go to the guys at the back of the gun. I'm like, hey, what was I today? They're like, you were like 91, 92. I was like, what? No way. And so the, my next outing, we're playing the uh, the Marlins, and I struck out the side. And I'm just like, how hard was I throwing? They're like, you're up to 94. I was like, I got something here. And all the coordinators coming up to me, yo, like, you know how much your ball moves? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, I was like, I don't, I don't know. They're like, we're, we're going to send you to AAA. And they would call me in the office and just be like, if you don't pitch in the big leagues with us, you're going to be in the big leagues with somebody else. Blah, 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 all this stuff. And that's where my t- career took off that year in 2016 after I just dropped my arm angle. I mean, that's, and it's, it seems so minuscule, but it changed the entire complexity of the way that you threw. Yeah. If I didn't ever do that, I would never be talking to you right now. So what, who told you to just continue to throw sidearm? My gut instincts. Yeah. I've learned over the years to listen to it. So that's what I, that's what I'm doing. That is, I mean, the, your story is insane because your time in the, in the minors was long. Your road to get to this point has been strenuous. And the fact that you're sitting here talking to me is so, it's so insane. Yeah, I should never be here. I'm a 28th round draft pick. We don't belong here. You know what I mean? And so I just overcame some odds. You know, I always wanted to pitch in the big leagues and, you know, be successful. And and it's just always back in my subconscious mind, like I'm going to pitch in the big leagues. And that's why I've never really gave up. I've wanted to quit plenty of times, but I just never had the balls to do it, I guess you could say. So if you were telling draft year you, one piece of advice what would you tell him oh man draft you or me oh man i was so immature back then um drop sidearm <laughs> <laughs> just cut straight to the chase just go sidearm because you'd be at the big leagues the next year that's awesome yeah and what what would you tell the the youth players who are wanting to be in your position um just keep go keep going after it i mean i'm a 511 left-handed pitcher you know that throws funky and if i honestly and 28th round draft pick like if i could do it anybody could do it because the technology out there is so far advanced from when i started coming up that they have all the resources in the world to do it that's so cool is there anything else that you want to add that you think that this podcast episode would benefit from or is there anything that you feel like I missed about your story I think you hit it all on on the head I think you did well yeah so that I believe concludes our interview and I'll I'll email you once this podcast episode is is published cool awesome thank you no problem have a good one have a great rest of your day you too bye bye